Well, welcome everybody to the 2020 History Makers at Home, supporting Mohai and its education programs. We are live here at Mohai right now. It's so great to be in this beautiful space. I can't wait until you can be back here. We are minutes away from our main program. That's gonna start at 7 p.m. Pacific. But I'm here with a quick reminder. The online silent auction will close tonight at 7, 10 p.m. Pacific. So if you have not yet logged into Greater Giving, we need you to do that because that is how you bid and it is also how you donate to support this amazing place. So here's what I suggest. Watch this show on a bigger screen like a laptop and then if you can, grab a second device like a phone and head to mohai.ggo.bid. Click the button that says get started. If you're there for the first time or if you're not logged in, just create your profile, enter your credit card information, you'll be all ready to have fun. Now you'll know you've done it right because you'll see your name right near the top of the main page. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us in the YouTube chat or give us a call, 206-324-1126. You can call for help with bidding or if you're having technical issues throughout the program, you know, I mentioned the YouTube chat. We wanna know that you're here with us. Say hi in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. What exhibits are you excited to see? We're watching the chat here. I love Ben Straley saying, great to be here. I'm already in a bidding war with my father. I love that. Harold loves the music. We're all having fun here. So everybody, also, if you're taking pictures, share your photos of yourself attending this virtual event. You can post directly to our Facebook event page, or you can use the hashtag Mohai History Makers. Again, hashtag Mohai History Makers. So everybody, keep on bidding on that silent auction. Again, we're closing that down at 7, 10 p.m. Pacific. You can click a button that says bid more, set a maximum bid on all of your favorite silent auction items. That way you're guaranteed to win a lot. We'll see you, my friends, when we go live to kick things off at 7 p.m.
Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Mohai's 35th Annual History Makers at Home event. My name is Chad Richardson, proud Mohai trustee and immediate past president of the board. And this is my wife, Tara Richardson. We are honored to be co-chairs of the 2020 History Makers at Home event. On behalf of Mohai, the board of trustees, as well as the museum staff, volunteers, and members, Tara and I are delighted to welcome you from Mohai's Feiji Allen Atrium. Thank you for joining us on this special evening. It's been a long time since we've been able to enter through these doors, stand in this space, and enjoy the many incredible sights, sounds, and stories that Mohai offers to the thousands of people who come here every year. As you can see, History Makers is a bit different this year. We've gone virtual, but even though we can't be here in person, we can still all come together to support this wonderful institution and celebrate our local heroes working on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic and social justice movements striving to make a change in our community. We're lucky to have several of these individuals as honorees tonight. Many of you with us this evening are history makers yourselves who contribute so much to the area. And like Mohai, we believe that the history of our region can help us make inspired choices for our shared future and serve as a guiding light for our When I joined the board in 2009, I remember telling our executive director, Leonard Garfield, one of my fondest memories was visiting the Museum of Science and Industry when I was 10 years old. It had a profound impact on my life and helped redirect my interests towards a career in engineering, which eventually led me to a small town Illinois to the Boeing Company here in Seattle. It's a constant reminder to me why it's so important for us to support institutions like MOA. For those of you joining us for the first time tonight, welcome. We're going to have a wonderful evening celebrating our everyday heroes and raising support for Mohai. Let's get this evening started. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Chad. Thank you so much, Tara. Look at us, here we are. Welcome everybody, and thank you again to Chad and Tara Richardson. This is the 35th annual History Makers at Home. This year, you are celebrating, of course, from the comfort of your home, but I get to be here live at this beautiful museum, as you can see. Everyone, my name is Fred Northup Jr. I'm thrilled to be back as your auctioneer for this evening. Later, I'll be joined by Leonard Garfield, Executive Director, Sandra Snyder, Director of Education. Now, for the last seven years, I've had the privilege of working with Mohai on this really fun event. It is one that is truly dear to my heart. Not only did I invent something called the rain globe that is on display right behind me at the museum, but I also love this museum. I love everything about it. I especially love coming here with my kids. As a parent, one of the things that you hope to develop in your kids is curiosity and a lifelong passion for learning. And we find that here. And I always love being here and asking my kids, what do you think that's happening today that's gonna be in Mohai in the future? Or what will you be a part of that will help shape our city and shape our region? And now more than ever, my kids are very aware that history is being made right now. And this place here, it inspires them to think, what good can we do today that will be in this museum tomorrow? So on behalf of everyone who visits Mohai, thank you for making history come alive so that we can all appreciate and learn the important lessons of the past and so that we can use that to build a better future for everyone. 
Now, one way to support this amazing place is to bid in the online silent auction. Proceeds from tonight's event support Mohai's exceptional educational programs and scholarship funds. So you are bidding for a great cause. The online silent auction will close at 7.10 p.m. So this is your last chance to bid on the silent auction, including framed Mohai photographs, a collection of amazing restaurant gift cards, there's amazing art, wine, and more. The online silent closes at 7.10 p.m. And guess what, the live auction items, they're also up for bid right now. Now, if you're not sure how to play along, here's what we recommend. Watch this show on a bigger screen, like a laptop or a smart TV, then grab a second screen and use that, maybe it's a phone, use that second screen, go to mohai.ggo.bid. Using a second screen, I think, is best because then you don't have to interrupt any of this fun program. Now, if you're at Greater Giving for the first time or if you're not logged in, look for the, the words that say uh, get started. You'll find those at the top of your screen. And by the way, if you're ever watching on YouTube and you ever have a technical glitch, such as audio and video, stop syncing. Just refresh your YouTube browser and most problems will be magically fixed. Or for questions or assistance with tonight's program, you can call 206 Three, two, four, one, one, two, six. Press zero. The museum staff is standing by. Now, as you can tell, we're not in the same room. You're not behind me, but things are a little different. But I promise you, we're going to keep it as fun as possible for those of you joining us from the comfort of your own home. And I can't bring the fun and joy all by myself. So we're going to bring out our honored guest joining me now, socially distanced. We measured six feet right. right here. One of my favorite people in Seattle, the executive director at Mohai, Leonard Garfield. Leonard, so great to see you in person finally. Fred, it is great to see you. I'm putting my mask away you can do for that. just this moment. And I want to say good evening to everyone. I want to acknowledge as we start this evening that we are on native ground and we honor the Duwamish and Coast Salish people whose land this is and whose history we honor. Tonight, Fred, we're celebrating our community and honoring everyday heroes, those individuals who have demonstrated acts of kindness, courage, and change over the last eight months. We'll get to our first honoree shortly, but I want to thank our sponsors for their continued support. First, a huge thanks to our gold sponsors, B2 Launch, The Boeing Company, and The Seneca Group. Yes, let's also thank our silver sponsors, GM Nameplate, Lasher, Holzaffel, Sperry, and Eberson. You, Leonard Garfield, <laughs> and Rachel Shrewsbury. And Fred, we also need to thank our event hosts for their generous support. Many Absolutely. of those are doing it at home. Absolutely, I love that. Uh, we really want to thank our community champion and community friend hosts. Thank you, of course, to our amazing individual community champions. Thank you to our individual community friends. I mean, we could not do this event with all of our fun event hosts. So we give you all a big round of applause to all of our sponsors, right, for really making this happen. Now, the live auction items, they're up for bid right now. But before we start closing down the live auction items, if you've been to our event before, you know that uh, a highlight is always that you, Leonard, you always give us this great state of the museum update. So we're going to turn to Leonard to give us some updates on the museum now. Okay, well, thank you, Fred. Yes, every year at this time, I have the special opportunity to share with you news from the museum and how we're serving our community. And tonight, that report is different. Uh, for one thing, you're not here, but I feel your spirit at home, and I'm happy for that and thankful. Um, we started this year with two amazing exhibits that connected Seattle with the world. First, Beyond Bollywood, discovering the rich heritage of the South Asian community in our region in partnership with the Smithsonian Institution. And then we explored the world heritage landmark, Mont Saint-Michel, by presenting the very first ever mixed reality museum experience in a special partnership with Microsoft, the French government, and the Musée de Plan Relief in Paris. It was a remarkable start to the year. Then something even more remarkable happened to all of us. And like you, we at Mohai moved quickly and decisively to serve our community in urgent and new ways during the coronavirus pandemic. We began to capture history in the making by collecting the stories and artifacts of our community as we stood on the front lines of the global pandemic. 
Then we took history to your home with entirely new online resources to provide educational experiences to thousands of young people, families, and teachers who depend on Mohai each year, taking the rich experience of historical discovery right into the hands and homes of thousands of students. We also rose to the challenge of addressing America's history of social injustice, working with organizations like our partners at the Black Heritage Society of Washington to explore the unfolding experience of democracy in our region. Our special initiative of programs and exhibits is called Stand Up Seattle, the Democracy Project. And needless to say, it could not be more timely. The exhibit and its online companion at mohai.org asks each of us not to just stand on the sidelines, but to stand up to participate in the grand experiment of government of, by, and for the people. Now we're looking forward to joining you again in person, welcoming you back to the museum in late November. And then coming in 2021, we'll be focusing on the traditions of innovation that allow us as a community to stay resourceful and resilient despite new challenges. I'm especially excited, Fred, to announce this evening that on May 1st, we will proudly launch the 2021 premiere of the international touring exhibit, Da Vinci Inventions curated by a global team of experts and bringing to life 60 of the most amazing inventions conceived and designed by the Renaissance master. It's a show unlike any Mohai has curated and reminds us that the next Leonardo may be right here in our community, a young person becoming a part of the great tradition of innovation that makes our region strong, the stories of which Mohai preserves and shares every day. I'll look forward to updating you on that in the near future. But in the meantime, Fred, let's recognize our first honoree. I am thrilled to do that. As Leonard said, again, we are celebrating our community and honoring everyday heroes that have demonstrated all acts of kindness, heroism, and change, big and small, over the last eight months. We received 26 different nominations from all over the region, and we're thrilled to recognize them and thank them for their contributions. Indeed, our Everyday Hero nominees have made impacts across the region in such challenging areas as social justice, education, medical research. I want you to take a look at all the nominees on your screen. They make us proud, and we are so thankful for their service. And I want to call their names. Dr. Helen Chu, Reverend Rick Reynolds, Angela Kemsky, Claire Wilson, Jayashree Krishnar, Ryan Dwyer, Paula Houston, John Pearson, Pran Wahi, Carmen Best, Tamina Watson, Junius Rochester, and some others that you'll learn about later this evening. Every one of these nominees is a true hero, making our community stronger every day with their special acts of kindness, courage, and change. And you know, their stories are part of our history. And Mohai is committed to working with them to make sure that those inspiring stories are part of the history that we present and share so that we learn and never forget. And for this evening's event, a panel of community volunteers and Mohai trustees has selected three honorees that we will be paying special tribute to tonight. So let's meet our first Everyday Hero nominee. I mean, and what amazing company that they get to be in. But our first Everyday Hero honoree is Converge Media and Omari Salisbury for his long-standing coverage of Seattle's Central District and reporting on the CHOP, George Floyd Black Lives Matter protests, and more. Omari Salisbury is fully committed, driven, and open with his opinions. He loves lifting black history, and his passion is fueled by a love for family and community. My friends, take a look at our first honoree. Hey, my name is Omari Salisbury. I'm the founder of Converge Media. We create culturally relevant content for Seattle's black and urban community. The last eight months, I'll be honest with you, we've been real busy. Early on this year, we launched the morning update show every Monday through Friday from 11 to 12. We launched it back in March so we could give people in our community curated information about COVID and the best information possible. If you remember early on, information about COVID, it was so much, it was like drinking out of a fire hydrant. So we launched the morning update show really to make sure, especially the elders in our community in the Central District and the South and the Seattle had the best possible information. From there, we rolled into the protests, May 29th, that Friday, actually, uh, we, we were out there covering the protest 
and really we never stopped. Um, from, from the Western Barricade to Chaz to CHOP, um, the current protests that are still going on, but also City Hall and, and the Mayor's Office and County Executives and Community Leaders and everything else in between. I think that Converge has played a role in fostering communication between all, all different types of parties and factions that are out there, but also giving the citizens of Seattle a ground level view of what's going on and really trying to talk to as many voices out there as possible so people can formulate their own opinion. It doesn't always have to be far left or far right. Maybe we can get all the information and make our own opinions about things. Um, for me, um, ever optimistic, that's just my nature. So every day I wake up optimistic and ready to face the day. And I'm hopeful that here in Seattle, our beloved Emerald City, that and citizen stakeholders will continue to just dig a little bit deeper and let's see how we can work together to have the Emerald City that we all deserve. Amazing. Thank you so much, Omari, for your inspiring work in our community. I'm watching the chat. I love Enrique saying Omari gives hope for what true journalism can and should be. We really thank you for all that you're doing. Well, magically like that, while Omari was talking live here in the studio now at Mohai, we've got Sandra Snyder, everybody, Mohai's Director of Education, which that has got to be the most fun job. I know how much I love this place. You get to be here every day. It is really the best job anyone could ever ask and for. And I'm sure you're so excited about kids, the return. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful to see them as soon as safely possible. Yes, I know, aren't we all? So you're here, of course, to help with the live auction yes. as we've done this before. We're professionals, we're dialed in. You're at home, we're here, but remember, we're all together. So a quick reminder to everyone watching, if you haven't gotten set up to bid and donate yet, you gotta do that now. So grab a second screen if you can, like a phone or a tablet, and head to mohai.ggo.bid. No Ws, no anything else, just mohai.ggo.bid. If you've got any questions, reach out to us in the chat or call the support number at the bottom of your screen. All right, I know everyone is excited to support Mohai, so we're gonna finish bidding on our first four live auction items at the same time. And so what are those? So closing down will be the first lot of the Mohai Trusty Wine Cellar, the special Da Vinci Inventions exhibit at Mohai for 10, the Bainbridge Island Getaway, and the beautiful Roberto Coin Pois Moi Diamond Earrings. These items will all close together in just over four minutes. All right, so closing at the same time, but don't worry, to help you bid, we're gonna put up a countdown timer on your screen and you're gonna have four final minutes to finish your bidding on items one, two, three, and four. Those have been open for a long time, but this is when we're gonna shut them down together. Now, if you need help bidding, here's my professional tip. You can set a maximum bid on one item or two items, just click bid more on your favorite items. When you click bid more, you have two choices. You can either bid more instantly, jumping the bid way up, or you can click max bid and the computer will automatically bid for you each time you're outbid all the way up to your max bid. So set your max bid high so you don't get outbid. I promise you a really high max bid, that is the best way to win. Now, if you're not 100% sure that you're seeing the most recent bids, you can always just refresh your bidding page. All right. You're ready, I'm ready. Everyone at home ready to bid on items one, two, three, and four? We're gonna put four minutes on the clock on your mark, get set, bid. All right, we're gonna talk about these items while everyone finishes bidding and watches the clock. I'm gonna go first. Item number one is the trusty wine cellar, lot A. You enjoy a case of fine wines. Each of the 12 bottles is valued at about $100 each, although many of these are hard to find. Good luck. They were all hand-selected from the collections of Mohai trustees. And I'll say this again later too, but all of these wines are spectacular. I wanted to highlight a few. You really can't. They're all incredible wines. So go to item number one. You can see the full list there on your bidding device. If you love wine, take a very close look. There are stunning old world wines. There are new world wines on this list. There's premier crew, incredible library wines that you can't find anywhere else but from a trustee's cellar. These are all incredibly amazing. Go to item number one, set your max bid really high. And checking in right now, we can see that Jeffrey Wolford is in the lead, outbidding Harold Becker. We had, it's Sean, you were in there for a little while. Chuck, you were there too. So everyone jump in. The next bid is $1,680. These are hard to find wines. And plus, we all need great wine at home in these times. I'm sure you've gone through a little bit in your cellar. So bid high, support Mohai, and let's talk about item number two. 
All right, item number two is the After Hours Da Vinci Inventions exclusive exhibit tour for 10. Enjoy wine and appetizers in the Microsoft Lakefront Pavilion, followed by a private access tour of the long-awaited Da Vinci Inventions exhibit with Mohai Executive Director Leonard Garfield. This is going to be an incredible exhibit. Italian artisans have faithfully crafted interactive and life-size machine inventions. This will include the first concepts of a car, bicycle, helicopter, glider, submarine, and more. It's really, I've seen pictures of these full-sized inventions. It's amazing. It's absolutely incredible, and you're gonna to get to be there with this private VIP tour. Um, I mean, they're built to scale. I mean, it's incredible. We've seen them on the page, but now to see them come to life, it's incredible. Absolutely. So, all right, right now, Kim Frost is in the lead. Jeffrey Wolford's been outbid. Linda Johnson, you were there too. So who's gonna get this? This is a really fun opportunity. It's item number two. Let's talk about item three, the Bainbridge Island getaway, because we've got less than two minutes on these remaining items. Up to eight people can relax on Bainbridge item at this beach house overlooking Agate Pass for up to four nights. Activities include beach walks, pickleball, basketball, ping pong, or just watch the boats go by. If you're feeling active, check out the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art, the Japanese American Exclusion Memorial, and the Bainbridge Island Historical Museum. Right now, Jeffrey in the lead there as well. Chad Richardson's been outbid. Who's gonna get to go? Oh, so much fun. Everyone needs a vacation. All right, our last item. All right, also about to close are the Roberto Coin Bois Moi Diamond Earrings, item number four. Take a look at all the pictures on the Greater Giving bid page. These are beautiful. These hoop earrings showcase a recessed dot design with a hinged snap closure, signed with the signature Roberto Coin small ruby on the inside of the earrings. Yeah, these earrings are so cool. Absolutely. It's big and bold and modern, and I love these. So checking in with our earrings right now, let's see, Maria Denny, you're in the lead right now. You're outbidding our good friend, Mr. Leonard Garfield. I like it. Who's gonna get these? Jeffrey, you were there. Mark was there. Who is gonna get these? The next bid, $3,300, but Maria in the lead at $2,970. It's anybody's game. Now there's 30 seconds left. I will tell you, we're using the internet to conduct this auction, so there might be a slight lag between when I close things down and when you all see them close on your phone. So make sure you just keep bidding on your phones until the items are fully closed. Of course, we're gonna close these starting with the delay that you're all experiencing, so don't worry, they're not gonna close early. But my friends, the best secret I can give you is to set that max bid really high. Let's check in on our first item real quick to see who's in the lead right now on that wine. Harold Becker's going back and forth with Jeffrey, but we'll see, set that max bid high because time has run out. We're gonna start shutting down those items as quickly as we can. Again, our first four items are closing down now, and I'm hearing that we might be able to sell a second and third place Da Vinci package, so bidders, we're gonna reach out to you to confirm that, but the second place bidder, third place bidder, you sounds like you might get one as well. All right, nice. so congratulations to our first four auction item winners. Before we move on, we've already met one of our everyday heroes. Let's honor our second everyday hero from our region. Our next heroes are Dr. Lisa Chu, Martine Pierre-Louis, and Paula Houston from Harborview Medical Center. These UW Medicine COVID-19 equity champions rose to the challenge of suppressing the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak with inventive, real-time solutions. They realized that serving everyone required a fully concerted effort between medical personnel and community outreach. Take a look at their story. Hello, my name is Lisa Chu, and I am the Associate Medical Director of Ambulatory Care at Harborview Medical Center. Over the past eight months, I, along with my colleagues, Martin Pierre-Louis and Paula Houston, have been leading efforts to improve access to COVID-19 testing in underserved communities across King County. Early on in the pandemic, we noticed that the majority of patients who were hospitalized at Harborview for COVID-19 were limited English proficient. Looking more broadly, we found that limited English proficient individuals and persons of color had much higher rates of COVID-19 than the rest of the population. There was a significant health inequity that we needed to address. We had to figure out how to make COVID-19 testing more easily accessible to these communities, and we needed to do it quickly given the trajectory of the pandemic. We also wanted to build a program that would be meaningful, impactful, and culturally sensitive. We reached out to many of the racial ethnic minority groups that were disproportionately affected by COVID-19 to understand the many barriers they faced. 
We actively engaged and worked with multi-sector organizations such as public health, community health centers, schools, local government, businesses, and community health boards who were essential in helping us build a successful testing program. Our mobile testing program consisted of one van serving the homeless population and a second van focusing on communities of color. Many of our sites were in South King County where we were seeing very high positive rates. We did our best to eliminate barriers, taking all comers, eliminating any cost to the patient, and providing interpretation support. The teamwork and tireless effort by many of my colleagues at Harborview and the collaboration and shared sense of responsibility of communities and multi-sector organizations were truly amazing. We are so grateful for the partnership that helped us address in real time the disparities we were seeing. My hope for the future is that we continue to develop and strengthen our relationships with the community to work together to advance equity and improve the overall health and well-being of the community during and long after the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you for your important work and for making such a difference in our community. Again, we're seeing all the love in the chat. Thank you to everybody for joining us. You know, it's almost time to raise our virtual paddles and make a tax-deductible donation to support Mohai. Just go to mohai.ggo.bid, look for the button that says Support Mohai. But first, I'm honored to introduce Rebecca McLeod, President of Mohai's Board of Trustees. Good evening. My name is Rebecca McLeod, and I'm honored and humbled that you're joining us here tonight. For the past year, it's been my privilege and pleasure to serve as the President of Mohai's Board of Trustees. Although Mohai is a history museum, tonight is all about our future. Our future is, of course, our children. Our goal this evening is to raise funds for Mohai's outstanding education programs. Mohai's education programs use history as a launching pad to the future. Scholarships underwrite the visits of one third of the students who come to Mohai with their schools by paying for transportation costs. During the past eight months, our education team has had to pivot due to the pandemic, and we're now offering critical online resources for teachers and families who are teaching from their homes. Your generosity makes the museum accessible to all families and schools in our community during this critical time. The past year has shown us that Mohai is way more than just a space. It's a commitment to preserving the past, looking to the future, and creating educational opportunities that make connections between the past and the future. I just love being back in this space, and I hope it inspires all of you at home to join me in showing your support for Mohai this evening. Thank you for all that you've done over the years to support children across our region. And thank you for all you'll do tonight to support Mohai's education programs. We'll be back here together again soon. Well, Mohai is an extraordinary place for learning, inspiration, and imagination. And we know that history inspires people to be their best individually and collectively. And now it's your opportunity to support educational programs and scholarships so that all kids have access to this incredible place. So to start us off, our top level is $25,000. If you can join us now at $25,000, Please do. Wow, $25,000 is an amazing gift. It makes a huge difference. And Fred, I see that we have a, a donor at $25,000, Tom McQuaid. He's a beloved trustee of Mohai and a great supporter of History Makers. Thank you, Tom. And I see that we have another $25,000 donation that's come in from the Helen Johnston Foundation. The Helen Johnston Foundation has been a great supporter of educational programs at Mohai. Thank you to both Tom McQuaid and the Helen Johnston Foundation. That's absolutely amazing. All right, well, if you can join them at $25,000, please dig deep, please do it for Mohai and for all the kids that are gonna come here and all the kids that are experiencing Mohai remotely right now. Right. We're going to keep going at $15,000. If you can join us at $15,000, please do. Remember, right now, you can support vital education programs that help bring history to life for our community's youth. Boy, a gift of $15,000 makes such a difference. And I am delighted to say that tonight, Linda and Ted Johnson have just raised the paddle at $15,000. Thank you, Linda and Ted. That is amazing. Yeah, we're seeing those gifts coming in live right now, big and small. Thank you, Roger Bass, for joining us at $1,000. And we see Gavin Lambie joining us at $2,500. All these gifts. This is a community coming together it really is. right now. 
If you can join us at $10,000, that's our next level, $10,000. When you donate $10,000, you help create and mount exhibits like Stand Up Seattle, The Democracy Project. You help secure exhibits like the Da Vinci inventions that I'm so excited for. Yeah, it's so important. $10,000 helps bring exhibits. And I see that we have a $10,000 Raise the Paddle gift from Mike Repass. Thank you, Mike. Your support helps bring great exhibits this year and every year you've been with us. Thank you, Mike. Amazing. If you can join Mike, please do right now at $10,000. Again, such a transformational oh, gift. These are amazing gifts. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Now, if you can join us at $5,000, please join us at $5,000. When you donate $5,000, you can support the conservation of more than 100,000 artifacts and 4 million photographs, books, and documents at Mohai's Resource Center. And the gifts are coming in. John and Bobby Bridge, thank you for the $5,000 gift. Amazing. So appreciated. Maureen Frisch, Mohai Pass Board President, $5,000. They're coming in. David Law and Kristen Stocker, David's a Mohai trustee, $5,000. A $5,000 raise the paddle from Tim and Mary Nelson, a former trustee. Thank you, Tim and Mary. Maggie Walker at $5,000, a good friend of the museum. Thank you, Maggie. And Lynn and Frank Lindsay also at the $5,000 level tonight for Raise the Paddle. Thank you all for those incredible gifts. Amazing. Now, at this level, we have an exciting announcement. You heard Tom McQuaid. You said that yeah, he was starting us off at $25,000. Right. Right. Well, apparently he's not done. Starting now, Tom McQuaid will match all gifts up to $25,000. That's another $25,000. So thank you so much, Tom McQuaid. We wish that you were here with us. It's always so wonderful to be with you, but this generous match will help sustain Mohai and provide the opportunity to offer more compelling exhibits and programs in 2020 and 2021. This support is even more important during this uncertain time. So who can join us now at $2,500? Remember, now your $2,500 becomes $5,000 with our match. Absolutely, and we are getting $25,000 raise the paddles, the Juniper Foundation. And I am seeing here that we have a John and Christina Hogan raise the paddle twice for $2,500. I see them as $5,000. Am I That's reading amazing. that correctly, well, Fred? Thank you, John and Christina. You guys are great. Mike and Kathy Stanley at $2,500. And we appreciate that so much. These gifts are just amazing. Yes, and we're, again, there's Gary Newman joining us live at $3,500. Wow. We're seeing thank you, all Gary. of these gifts coming in live right now. Thank you so much. And Laura, if there's anything we're missing, let us yeah, know. Let Look, us you know. can see here's another one. Oh, our friends Martha Wyckoff and Jerry Tone, three thousand five hundred dollars. They're not following the, uh, the order we're going in. Fred. I, no, they're no, just giving. Nor we're should you. Nor should a, you. Absolutely you, There's not. a custom button. If there's yeah. if there's a gift that is truly meaningful to you, that's our goal. Is that everybody joins yeah, us? Absolutely. Stephanie McLemore, thank you so much. Just we ask yep. that everyone join us. Everyone dig deep and again make a gift that's truly meaningful to you. Here's another one, Leonard, coming in live right there. Thank you, John and Justine. We really appreciate your generosity. Absolutely. John Justine Milberg, we thank you so much for your support. Uh, Katie D'Amato uh, just came in with a $1,000 gift. So we're, we're going to be getting to all these levels, but this is amazing. People yes, are, Mike and there's and, John and Bobby again. And, and Mike and Kathy Stanley. I mean, yep, we're seeing all yep. these gifts coming in. At, we're announcing them. We're seeing them. We're, just, we, <laughs> we're, we're like at the helm of the Starship Enterprise. People are, can't see what we, we see, but we've got screens everywhere showing us the yep. giving. All right, our next level is $1,000. And remember, $1,000 becomes $2,000 because of our challenge. In these times when civic dialogue is so critical, when you donate $1,000, you help present important democracy dialogue programs at MOHAI, such as Vote by Mail and community conversations, such as Democracy in the Age of the Pandemic. Right, and we are getting gifts at that level. And I think maybe we're going to have to keep looking at these gift levels because people are giving and then they're giving again. It's, so it's hard yeah, to I'm, keep I'm up. I'm having it's a good, trouble keeping it's a good up. Prompt. I see, I see um, Roger Bass at $1,000, and I see um, uh, 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 Marin and Brandon Higby at $1,000, and Robin Barron at $1,000. And we might thank the same people twice. That's I, okay, I think too. we're going to have to thank the same people twice <laughs> because I also saw that a gift came in from... Uh, Rebecca and Sean McLeod. We just heard from Rebecca, that very inspiring message. And Rebecca, I'm going to thank you and Sean when I get the exact amount because I'm not <laughs> sure I have it. And Katie D'Amato, a Mohai trustee and a wonderful friend of the museum. Thank you, Katie. I'm going to get your amount when it comes seeing, through. I'm seeing Linda Johnson joining yep. us at $1,000. I'm seeing Aaron Moyer joining us at $1,000. Uh, Wendy Pugnetti joining us at $1,000. Oh. There's George Corley. Yep, George Corley joining us at $1,000. I mean, and 
His Amazing. late wife, Peggy, was just such a hero to Mohai. So thank you, George, for joining us this evening. Yes, we, we, we really appreciate, appreciate everyone's generosity coming in live right now. Uh, there's Katie joining us right there. You've said, Katie, it's, it's like you can see the yep. future. And I saw Mike and Kathy Stanley at $5,000 just come across, and I think I may have had them at, a, at another level, so they, they keep giving. Yes, so thank you, everybody, as you're giving. Yep. Our next level is $500. $500. When you donate $500, you help cover scholarships for K-12 students so that Mohai's education programs remain accessible to all. You can ensure that no student is ever turned away because of financial limitations. And remember, we have this $25,000 challenge. If you give $500, it You're could become $1,000. Thank you, Tom and, McQuaid, for doing that. And we see people coming in. Uh, there's Jim Roop at $500. Thank you, Jim, a great hero of Mohai, Todd Smith. Thank you, Todd, $500. Um, uh, uh, Matt Cryan at $500. Uh, Suzanne Andreessen, a good friend of Mohai's at $500. Darren Habel at $400. Um, Stephanie McElmore at $250. And we're going to get, actually, I think, to that level. Let's in, in get a to it. Why because, not? And yeah. there's Mar because Margaret right there. I mean, just. There's Margaret. It's uh, so Jeff fun Wolford. to see all this gift coming I know, in I, live. Jeff, doing a shout out to you at $250. Thank you, Jeff. We appreciate it. Great friend of Mohai and on the Board of Trustees. There's Jack Root at $500. Uh, Courtney Witter at $500. I mean, that's amazing. This is amazing. It Just is amazing. look at all these. And you can see the funds raised over $100,000 yep. now. Courtney Witter at $500. Did we say that? Daniel Curley, John yep. Pearson. I mean, they're just yep. all. Ethlyn Abelonosa at $500. Jackie and Adrian Archer. I work with Jackie. And uh, Adrian works with Jackie. And we support, but we love both Jackie and Adrian at $1,500 tonight. That's extraordinary. Thank you so much. Um, well, $250 is our last official level. Okay. It's a fun one. When you donate, you can cover the cost of five portable museum trunk rentals. That brings hands-on history right into the student's classroom. So if you can join us at $250, please do. Of course, you can join us at any do donation amount, whether it's $100 or $5,000 or $100,000. You can click the custom button, give a gift that's truly meaningful to you. Tasha, thank you Tasha, for joining us. Alice Denstrom at $500. Uh, Paul Broderick, thank you, Paul, at $500. Really appreciate that. All of these people, such great friends, and really opening the doors to young people for this incredible resource. Joshua and Renee Hurst at $500. Um, we are having trouble keeping up. With I know, all it's a great <laughs> problem to have. Like, Billy let's... Whelan at $250. Thank you, Billy. Susan Lindsay, a former trustee and a dear friend, $500. Thank you, Susan, for yeah. your support tonight. And Kim Frost, another great friend of the museum, $500. Thank you, Kim. So, everybody, keep it coming. Carla and Donald Lewis joining us at $500. Keep those gifts coming in, of course because throughout the rest of our program, and even yep. throughout the week, you're, this giving link will be live. Yep. Of course, if you want to make a straight donation to Mohai, you can always go to mohai.org as well and look for the donate button there. People but, keep giving. I'm seeing these names I coming up. I love it. Keep Rebecca it McLeod and John, uh, uh, John Hogan just came in. Roger and Kay Ottenbach, wonderful friends from the Puget Sound Maritime uh, Historical Society, $500. John Pearson, who we're honoring tonight as an everyday hero, $500. Uh, Sharon and Tom Tanaka, $500. Jason Molding at $250. So there's just it's, so much generosity. And I tell you, it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop. It's going to happen the whole yep. program. We'll probably have to thank some more people Can at I the end of Jack our Root program. Can I thank Jack Root for $1,000? Of course, you should definitely thank Jack Root for $1,000. Okay, Jack 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 We're probably, they're going to they're gonna give us the hook here. And Fred. Harold Becker. <laughs> Harold Becker, thank you, Harold, at $1,000. Yes, and so, yes, of course, a big round of applause, everyone who's joining us, Kathleen Goodman. We expect these gifts to keep coming in. Yep. We'll thank a few more of you later oh, on I in our program. I want to thank Mark Ondo at $2,500. And Mark, I want to thank you. You have just joined the board of, of uh, Mohai Trustees recently, and we just are so honored to have you on our team. Really appreciate that, Mark. Yes, so thank you so much to everyone joining us. Kathleen Goodman, Carrie Beals, everyone joining us. If you, if you want to join us, you can keep joining us yeah. now. But we have another announcement. Okay. Tom McQuaid, as you heard, he gave $25,000, then he gave another $25,000. So he already donated a generous $50,000. Well, Tom is going to match himself. <laughs> and he is raising the paddle for yet another $50,000 to support Mohai. So thank you, Tom, for this amazing transformational gift. Mohai is so grateful and appreciative for this additional support, especially in this critical year. So thank you. Now, again, the giving link, we're going to keep it up all week. So please share this program. This link, this YouTube page is going to, this, this program is actually going to be archived right here. So you can share yep. this program with your yep. friends. You can share the giving link. Uh, share it on social media. Give it to your neighbors, your coworkers. We want them to support this amazing place too. And again, you can always go to mohai.org and give directly to the museum right there as well.
Now, a reminder, if you work for a company that will match your donation, like Boeing, since we've got the There's plane right behind me, Boeing, Microsoft, Starbucks, there's so many great companies out there that and match they're your here. giving. They're all represented They're all history. in this museum. Yep. So please make sure that they do that this week. Oh, absolutely. And thank you all for your generosity. It's really humbling and it's so transformational. We're so grateful for your support and helping Mohai preserve our history, our collective history for future generations. And now let's celebrate the third everyday hero of the evening. Feed the People with the Seattle Community Kitchen Collective. This is an amazing group of chefs who have organized themselves very early in the COVID-19 pandemic to provide free meals to everybody, all people in need of a hot meal. Their combined resources to prepare hundreds of meals nearly every day is a testament to their passion to feed the people and their desire to alleviate stress over the ability to simply obtain a basic need. The Seattle Community Kitchen Collective consists of Damon Bomar and, and Chef Christy Brown of That Brown Girl Cooks and Communion, Chef Tarek Abdullah, founder of Feed the People, Melissa Miranda of Musang, Shara Amlog of Hood Famous Bake Shop, Cam Hannon of Gorilla Pizza Kitchen, and Guitar Sri Suthian Morn of Sugar Hill. Now, we caught up with two of the chefs, Chef Tarek Abdullah and Chef Christy Brown, along with Damon Bomar, to learn more about the project. So everyone, take a look. Uh, my name is Damon Bomar. Um, I am Chef Christy's son. Hi, yeah. I'm uh, Chef Christy of That Brown Girl Cooks and also Communion Restaurant and Bar. Um, hello everyone, my name is Chef Tarek Abdullah, AKA Cook a Tea, uh, founder of Be The People. So when we found out on March the 3rd, the way we found out is that we had a job for 400 people the following week. Um, we, when we found out um, that our job was going to get canceled, really, that was just, that was the afternoon. By the end of the day, our entire March and half of April had been canceled. You know, when you lose that much money in a day, um, you really, you don't have anything else to give. You don't, you don't really know where to go. And it really, it was just such a godsend because Melissa called and was like, hey, come over to the restaurant, let's sit down and talk. And when we got there, we didn't even know everybody that was at the table. And that was just the beginning. We were able to sit down and talk about the loss. And just that moment of being able to have that camaraderie and that community really spurred us to be able to be like, of course, we're going to continue to do what we've been doing, which is feed the people that we we got to do it. That article just came out yesterday where our numbers were one in five people are needing food assistance. Um, now we, we were one in six and now we're one in five. And there's a projection that it will go down to one in three. And it's not, it is not a lack of food it is not a lack of food. It is people's access to the food is the challenge and the problem. Like, honestly, you, know, you should have seen, we got a picture, uh, we got a picture of one of the food distributors and the amount of food they threw in the trash. We probably done over, most of that was free. Yeah, yeah we don't have a, we don't have a food access issue. We just don't want to address it and make it a permanent thing and say, okay, people need solid, healthy food. Vegan, non-vegan, whatever, it has to be solid, healthy food for no matter who it is. And so I feel like what we are doing is laying down the, the framework of the future of restaurants, the future of chefs, and honestly, the future of food business. So this has brought up a larger conversation through this Community Kitchen Collective of how can we change the industry to fit the reality that we're living and the beautiful thing about it, I think we all agreed immediately off the bat that this was going to be a sustainable part of our business um, going forward. And that that was a really important thing that whatever we did with the community kitchen, that it would be something that we carried with us throughout our business going forward. Doing what this kind of work, it just brings so much meaning to your life and your work and what you do. Um, because you know that, you know, you're, you're feeding the least of them, the you know, the best of them is, is, is it really is gratifying. It continues to be so. Um, and we and we continue to find ways that we can keep going as well as, you know, and because it's all cute. Like the, the heartwarming service community kitchen is real beautiful and wonderful. But what's even more wonderful is if we are all able 
to continue to do this alongside our businesses that be able to make jobs and income for us, our families, and all of our employees. And so that really is the effort of what we're doing um, to feed people in both ways, money in their pocket and move food in their mouth. Right now, I know um, we're in the process of, of raising funds to be able to do this for the next two years. It's very easy for us to walk past a person that's begging, scrapping for chains to get a bite to eat. We've seen many of people walk, walk by and there's no more excuses. I feel like COVID, there's pros and cons to COVID, but the pro I'll say is that people have to realize it should not take a disaster or something tragic for every human being to be allowed to have a plate of food, a bottle of water, and a reef over our head. And if we cannot get any of our own, get our, come together on that, then you know what? Then this group here will continue doing the work. And when you're ready to join us, join us. Well, thank you so much, Feed the People, for all of your work with food security in our community. That's absolutely amazing. And again, so much love in the chat right now and so well deserved. All right, our good friend, you're back. It's Sandra, everybody, which means it's time for the live auction. Yes, it is. And look, we even have a friend who has joined us here. Um, all right, our next group of items that's going to close, I'm going to say is it's 5B, 6, 7, 8, and 9, just so everyone knows, yeah. 5B. So what are those? So the special Stand Up Seattle, the Democracy Project Tour, and Lunch at the Museum the second lot of the Mohai Trusty Wine Cellar, the unique Kiki So Blue, also known as Princess Angeline Maquette, the neon sign experience at the Mohai Resource Center in Georgetown, and the tugboat ride for four, followed by lunch or dinner at Duke's Restaurant. Yes, so we're gonna close all of those together in just over four minutes. Remember, the best way to win a live item is to click the button that says bid more and set a maximum bid on your favorite items. All right, four minutes on the clock, on your mark, get set, bid, and we're gonna start talking with item number 5B. All right, item number 5B is for 10 people. You'll explore Mohai's signature 2020 exhibit, Stand Up Seattle, The Democracy Project, with a special tour from exhibit curator, Dr. Amy Bott, and Mohai executive director, Leonard Garfield. After the tour, enjoy lunch at the Microsoft Lakefront Pavilion, this will be scheduled on a day that Mohai is closed for an exclusive experience for you and your guests at the museum. I mean, does it get any better than the exclusive behind the scenes access to this place? That it really is doesn't. so cool. And again, that's 5B right now, so you can find that. We just opened that item 5B. All right, item number six is the trusty wine cellar lot B. 12 bottles valued, again, at around $100 or more each. Normally, as I said, I'd tell you the highlights, but every wine is a highlight. There's Barolo, there's Bordeaux, there's Champagne, there's White Burgundy, there's so much more. So if you love wine, take a look at item number six on your phone, set your max bid high. There's a 1962, talk about history, a 1962 Barton and Goussier Saint-Emilion Bordeaux. There's a 2017 Bessin La Forêt Chablis Premier Cru. There's a 2005 DeLille Cellars D2 Estate Red. There's so much, and I love those library wines that you can't find anywhere. Right now, Rebecca McLeod in the lead, and uh-oh, you've just been outbid. Oh my goodness, Rebecca gets outbid by John. John versus Rebecca. June was in there, Lawrence was in there. Wine lovers, this is your chance with only two minutes and 30 seconds bid on this amazing wine lot. All right, what's number seven? Number seven is the Neon Lovers Special for six. Enjoy an exclusive up close and personal tour of Mohai's priceless collection of neon signs, including the beloved elephant car wash sign, which is making its way to Mohai for restoration in the next few weeks. This takes place at the Mohai Rest Resource Center where you can see the city's first neon sign and learn from neon experts as you explore restorations in progress. I'm so fascinated, the first neon sign. I, I'm very excited, I love neon. So here we go, checking in on this one right now. Gavin is in the lead here. Ms. Win Winifred Hussey, you've been, or Husey, you've been outbid. It's Gavin versus Winifred going back and forth. Who's gonna come out on top? Right now, Gavin's in the lead at $2,100, but everyone else you can bid. It's only $100 more, $2,200. And again, that behind the scenes access to a place that none of us get to go to. Meanwhile, number eight, uh, we've got Kiki Soblu, also known as Princess Angeline, is that right? Uh, this is a bronze maquette, which is sitting here actually right next to me. A maquette is a sculptor's small preliminary model. So here's how this works. Artist Douglas Granham is creating five bronze maquettes 
of Princess Angeline in advance of the future full-sized bronze to be completed soon. Maquette number one is being donated to History Makers. It's in the final stage of completion by the date of the auction. This bronze maquette is modeled after a famous portrait taken near Pike Place Market in the late 19th century of Kiki Soblu. Uh, this is, by the way, she's the daughter of Chief Seattle, uh, with her baskets, as you can see here right next to me. This wonderful bronze is mounted on, this, on a jade base. It would be the envy of any art collector to have due to its complexity, its rarity, its beauty, plus, of course, the story behind such an iconic figure of Seattle history. All right, so right now, $5,100 uh, is, uh, sorry, $5,100, yes, is in the lead. The next bid, $5,950. And again, you can see this piece right next to me. It's absolutely stunning. You can see there on the photo on your screen, the, the, the origin, the development of this beautiful piece. And so let's talk with 25 seconds left about item number nine. Everyone set your max bid high quickly on item number nine. Jeffrey, we'll see if you can keep your lead over Chad with 15 seconds left. What is this? All right, it's all aboard for four people on a Western towboat company tug at the firm's Fremont dock. Travel through the locks, past the downtown waterfront, and dock at the Harbor Island Marina. Later, you can enjoy lunch or dinner at Duke's new waterfront restaurant on South Lake Union. Yes, and I've been to dinner there. It's stunning it's views, so, good. so close to here, of course. So my friends, we're gonna shut those items down now. Five, B, six, seven, eight, nine, we're closing those down. I hear we might be able to sell a second stand-up Seattle package and even maybe even a second maquette. So really? we'll find out about that. Second place bidders, we will reach out to you to confirm. Now, we're gonna wheel away this beautiful art. Thank you everybody, by the way, for your generosity. Thank you so much for your support of Mohai. We really appreciate all that you've done. And of course, if you're one of the donors, one of the bidders, we cannot do this without you. Of course, that giving link stays up. We're still seeing gifts coming in there as well. Now. Before we officially finish, we have one more opportunity to give. And there is no better person than Sandra to talk about Mohai's education programs and the bus scholarships. Thanks, Fred. Right now, students across the state are learning remotely. Mohai has pivoted to provide distance learning options that are engaging, relevant, and support inquiry-based learning while creating connections between the past and our students' lives. These are made available at no cost to the schools. We anticipate that when students are able to safely return to the classroom and to field trips, that the need for scholarship support will be greater than ever. Mohai's scholarship program serves learners to ensure that no student is ever turned away because of financial limitations. Scholarship supported field trips to Mohai are entirely free of charge for schools meeting the eligibility criteria. But even so, additional costs associated with visiting the museum can create barriers for some schools. The biggest challenge being the cost of bus transportation. And tonight, Mohai makes a commitment to never let that stand in the way. With your support, Mohai is proud to offer bus cost reimbursement up to $100 per class for field trip groups that come to Mohai on a scholarship. In 2019, Mohai provided scholarships for 124 programs. The majority of those classes took advantage of our bus reimbursement program. Tonight, you can sponsor a bus to bring students to Mohai for an unforgivable, for unforgettable learning experience. Yes, absolutely. So thank you so much. All right, everybody, we're going to do that right now. $100 can sponsor a class. So how many classes do you want to support bringing them here on those buses? Go to mohai.ggo.bid and click that Support Mohai button now. And guess what? Chad and Tara Richardson are matching your $100 donations up to $3,000. Kristen Kramer, I'm seeing you give $100 right now live. Remember, that becomes $200 thanks to Chad and Tara Richardson. They're matching you up to $3,000. So if you can join us now at $100, join us right now. Thank you again, Chad and Tara, for this incredible match. This match will provide opportunity for even more students in our community. And there we go. There's Kathleen D'Amato, I like that. Right there we can see, by the way, Maureen Frisch starting us off strong. She just bought 15 bus scholarships to kids so that they, those kids can experience Mohai, donating $1,500 as you just saw on your screen. So again, you can support, if you want, $1,500 as well. $1,500, you can support 15 bus loads full of kids coming here. Or you can do one bus of kids for $100 right now, 30 buses of kids for $3,000. 
Oh, look at that. Joining us at $1,000, Ben and Kari Straley, thank you so much for your generosity. Just go to mohai.ggo.bid and give. You can cl click the custom donation button if you want to support three or 33 buses. But again, we're seeing all these gifts continuing to come in. Dr. Hugh Straley, thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, Roger, thank you so much. Roger Ottenbach, thank you. We're seeing all of these gifts coming in right now. Uh, Leonard, you should come join me because all these people are joining. You, you, we were, you were so good when we were thanking everybody before as we're, now we're getting all these gifts coming yeah, in. Yeah, it's so hard to keep up. Uh, Marshall McReel at $250, uh, and, and it just keeps coming in. Uh, Milana Kalianakis at $50. That gets us half a bus, and we get another $50. Another $50, we get $50 the other, we get and we get the, the full bus. bus. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, we just can't be more thankful because the impact, Fred, that this makes, 30 thousand kids, young people, their caretakers, their teachers, and their parents every single year. And most of those people are free of charge because of the generosity of our supporters. Tonight. Absolutely. So Peter Murray joining us at $100. Now, everyone, if you can keep joining us, uh, Dennis Anders joining us at $500. If you haven't joined us yet, again, that giving link stays open right now. So thank you, David Law. Thank you, everyone going. But before we say goodnight, Leonard is here because we have one more very special announcement. Thank you, Fred, and thank you everyone again tonight. I am very honored to announce that this evening uh, we have a very special surprise. Our beloved trustee and our dear friend, Tom McQuaid, who we've already been so, uh, has been so generous tonight. He's a hero to Mohai, frankly, and our community every day. Tom has made yet another gift tonight. In addition to the $100,000 he's given so far, he is giving an additional $100,000 to Mohai. Wow. Tom, I can't thank you enough. It is transformative. Your extraordinary generosity, your support over so many years, your special gift this evening will serve as the launch for Mohai's upcoming 10th anniversary campaign, which will raise critical support to sustain Mohai now and into the future. Thank you again, Tom. Mohai is a stronger institution because of you. Let's all give Tom a round of applause, shall we? Yes, we should. We're gonna even type it in so that type we can hear in. you. Let's hear from that way we can hear you at home. People. And you know, Fred, in honor of Tom, um, and with deep appreciation for his leadership, his generosity, and he's actually conserved thousands of the artifacts that come to Mohai and are in our resource center, I'm pleased to announce that tonight, Mohai has decided to rename its Georgetown Resource Center into the Tom McQuaid Resource Center in Tom's honor. Wow. Thank you, Tom. We so appreciate you, and we want to thank you. Yes, so well-deserved. Such a wonderful honor. Well. Finally, I want to take a moment to remember those history makers of the past year whose loss has left an empty place in our hearts and our community. These people shaped our region in such profound ways, and we're inspired by their work and enriched by their legacy. So please join me for a moment of reflection as we remember our friends and history makers who left us this year. Thank you. Well, it was an incredible night, Fred. What a night. Uh, incredible generosity. And thanks again to all of our sponsors, our bidders, our donors, everybody who joined us. And congratulations once more to our everyday heroes. We are so inspired by the work you do in our community this year, and we know you'll be doing it in the years to come. Yes, again, thank you everybody for joining us. We are so inspired on behalf of everyone who loves and is inspired by Mohai. Thank you for what you did tonight. I'm looking to see if we even have a total. I know the gifts keep coming in, so I don't even know if we can announce one yet. My name is Fred Northup Jr. I'm here with you, Leonard. We also wanna thank Sandra for her amazing Absolutely. work here tonight. And of course, all of you at home who are watching, Thank you for what you did here tonight. Now this show is gonna stay here on YouTube. You can always give the link below. You can share this with your friends, with your family, on social media. Maybe you're into skywriting, however, you know, beach any way, art, however. Any way you wanna share it, we want you to share it. However you communicate <laughs> with your friends, please buy out probably Zoom and Teams and sure, all of that sure. as well. Whatever you're doing, please make sure that everyone knows to come visit us here at Mohai and at mohai.org, of course, yep, and everything else. So everybody, thank you again for being here. We hope to see you in person next year. The Save the Date for next year, History Makers, is going to happen on Friday, November 5th, 2021. 
Very exciting. So until then, my friends, so far right now, and we're adding in challenge matches, we're doing all oh of that, goodness. but we're looking at a number right here, Leonard. Look at that, where we it's are big, so far. It's a big number. $337,000 wow. wow. and counting is what we've done so far here tonight, my friends. So that's amazing. pretty incredible. Thank you all so much. And Fred, thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right, Friday, November 5th, 2021. Hope to see you then. Until then, be well and good night.